Welcome to Apex Philosophy, the perfect place to find motivation. Be sure to subscribe and listen every day so you can become your best self. Please like and share the video to help inspire others. How to rewire negative thinking. Who is Sadhguru? For today's video, we'll uncover the best advice from Sadhguru Jagadish Vasudev. If you want to know more about rewiring negative thoughts, tune into this video. Sadhguru is the founder and head of the Aisha Foundation, and this foundation serves as a center for yoga and other spiritual activities. Before we begin on this rewriting journey, let's first identify what Sadhguru thinks about negative thoughts. What are negative thoughts? Negative thoughts are perceived thoughts that have negative implications powered by fear, insecurities, and the like. Negative thoughts could often lead to sadness, anger, or depression especially when chronically repeated. For example, you may think that you're ugly due to your body shape not being ideal. Although this may sound like a small thing to other people, a lot of individuals actually suffer from body dysmorphia. They cannot love their bodies because they keep thinking negatively about them. Similarly, negative thoughts could also lead to other things such as revenge and other malevolent acts. For example, if you always keep thinking about how someone did you wrong, you are bound to lash out at them. Your emotions will overcome you because you keep ruminating on feelings of sadness or anger. You'll act out of character to enact your revenge for all the bad things they did to you. This is, of course, without realizing that the one that you are hurting most is you. How to remove thoughts. Sadhguru tells us that the nature of our minds is made of mechanisms that only add or multiply what we think. If you think that you are ugly, then you're bound to be ugly. You won't make an effort to wear nice clothes because you think it's pointless. You won't make an effort to wash your body and care for it because you think it's hideous. This is the nature of your mind because, in this mind, all the three pedals are throttle. There are no brakes, there is no clutch. Whatever you touch, it will only go faster. You will soon realize that these thoughts are buried in your subconscious such that all acts follow them. But imagine if we thought about positive things instead. Imagine how easy it is to multiply those wonderful thoughts. The list can go on and on only if we head the right way. Sadhguru also tells us the common mistake that most gurus and spiritual leaders make. When they share their philosophy, most of these teachers will tell you to not think about bad things and believe that it will magically go away. However, when I tell you not to think about a flying elephant with huge ears, you won't be able to think of anything else. The concept or idea is registered within your brain just as I said it, and telling you not to do it only makes it worse. The mind does not know when to stop unless you know how to control it. Again, each thought, no matter if it is negative or positive, is being added or multiplied to each other. It now becomes the mind's full-time job to cater to such thoughts. If you spend two minutes with your eyes closed, you will realize you cannot do anything forcefully with this mind. No matter what you do, you cannot remove such thoughts. It's like going to bed and you're tired, but you still think about the embarrassing thing you did when you spilled that coffee in the cafeteria a year ago. You suddenly think about the word you misspelled while writing the report for your colleagues. All of these thoughts will jump from one embarrassing thing to the other, and when you try and force it to stop, it won't stop and would even go faster. As such, Sadhguru explains how our minds are like a supercomputer that only knows how to add or multiply. No matter what we do, it will always be like that. Our mind's a fascinating thing, but it is also dangerous in that way. The supercomputer. The human mind is the most sophisticated computer on the planet. Let's take the time to appreciate it. What can the human brain do? First, it allows for our motor functions. Without minding things right now, you're actually reading the text on the screen as well as listening. You are inputting all the information you see on the screen. You are taking in the colors in the videos in the background. This is why it is a supercomputer. We can call upon it for help such that we can solve problems. We are sentient beings that are able to think. Sadhguru takes this further by saying even all the supercomputers have come out of this. The human brain functions unconsciously as well as consciously. All the smart AI and the technological advancements we have today 
comes from this human mind. And so he asks, when this is the case, is it not important that we understand the mechanics of how it functions? To control something, you must understand how it functions. So how does our brain function? Again, it was already established that there are no subtractions and divisions in our mind, and there is only the presence of addition and multiplication functions. Another important thing that we should note is that the mind should serve us. If we view it as a supercomputer, then it is apart from us or our character. Additionally, Sadhguru associates the mind and the body with vehicles that should serve the driver. If you sit in a vehicle, it must go where you want to go. If it goes to its own destination, what is the point of such a vehicle? It's just a nuisance. You as a character should be apart from your mind and body. Your mind and body are your tools in life. Again, it becomes a nuisance if it tries to control you. What's even more frustrating is that you can't just discard your mind and body. You can't just say that, okay, tomorrow, I won't bring my mind to work, or tomorrow, I'll disregard my body and punish it by not eating food. You, as a person, will always be together with your mind and body. Nothing can ever change that. It's one of the sufferings we must endure in this life. But Sadhguru gives us hope by telling us it doesn't have to be this way. Why make an enemy out of yourself if you can work with it? For example, when you get enough sleep, have you noticed how your mind works better the next day? With that good sleep, you feel less cranky and more energized to take on the day. But there is another trick to doing this. The Aisha Kriya. The process is called Isha Kriya. According to Safguru, this is to distance yourself from your physiological and psychological process. There is something called you which exists. If you are more conscious about the you, then you will slowly be conscious of the distinction between your mind and body. You wouldn't let it control you. For example, have you ever noticed that when you try to control your anger, you talk to yourself, you calm yourself down, and then you breathe in and out. The anger slowly dissipates and you learn how to control your response. That's one example of Ishakriya in practice. The concept of Ishakriya is that it is not a composite of all your thoughts and emotions and physiological processes. Beyond that, there is you. You are beyond all these emotions. You are beyond the negative and you go even beyond the positive. You are divine in the most mundane way. Safaru asks, why is it that you're not allowing that to come into your experience, which is the most significant aspect of who you are? When we do not allow ourselves to be our unique person, we are limiting ourselves from achieving great things. We become our own wall, our own nuisance. Is this really the right path? Who you are right now, the most significant aspect is, you and I are alive right now to complete the process of the Osha Kriya. We must stay in the present. We must be conscious of the present moment. When you are in the present, you become in tuned with your mind and body. This is especially true for those that practice meditation. The primary benefit of meditation is not the exercise of the body, but rather calming yourself to be aligned with the present moment. You are not in a hurry towards the future. You are not affected by the past. You are simply as is. You are simply being you. What you're thinking is not the important thing. We are alive right now. That is the important thing. For Sadhguru, there are only two kinds of suffering. Human beings go through physical suffering and mental suffering. For example, if your back is aching, it also affects how your mind works because it can't concentrate on the current task since there is this imminent pain. Another example could be that you fought with a friend this morning. The words were hurtful and this continues to bother you throughout the day. In turn, you only did half of the work and you weren't productive enough. Both sufferings go hand in hand. It's hard to separate them. But Sakuru says that once you create a little space between you and your mind, between you and your body, this is the end of suffering. Interestingly, this has always been the answer to most of our problems. If you let one suffering go, you slowly understand how to let go of the other. The thing we need to note as a part of this process is the direction. The direction. Sadhguru says that generally resentment, anger, is always directed towards somebody. 
it can be directed towards others or towards yourself. Should this negativity be directed towards yourself, then you are causing your own doom. You are slowly injecting poison into yourself and expecting to go through the days as if you are well. It will be stuck deep beneath your mindset and affect you for the rest of your life. Similarly, if it is directed toward others, you are still poisoning yourself. According to Sadhguru, we need to understand this is the poison that we are drinking and expecting somebody else to die. Fortunately, life doesn't work like that. If I drink poison, I die. The other party is not the one carrying your hatred for them. It is you that is carrying all that negativity. So now the question becomes, what should I do? The reason why we ask this question despite knowing the answer is that we want closure. More often than not, we don't want to let go of such negative feelings because that closure never happened. Nobody said sorry. Nobody made an effort to make it better. But you must also know that you can give yourself the closure you need. Do not rely on the other person because you might just be waiting forever. Don't do anything. Just sit back and just concern yourself with something which is the life process. Maybe your heartbeat, maybe your breath, maybe just the sensation of being alive. You need to focus on the present. Life is a never-ending process of being in the present. This is the you that you are. Yesterday was a different you. Tomorrow may be a different you, but focus on the now and be in the present. The present. The best way to practice being in the present is through meditation. To meditate, you need to close your eyes so you can concentrate. Afterward, you need to focus on your breathing. Feel how the air goes in and out of your lungs. It's also great to tune into guided meditations so you can feel accountable enough to concentrate. Sometimes if we do things alone, we get lost in our thoughts. And that's also another thing. A calm mind is not the absence of thoughts, but the recognition of them before letting them flow. Again, if you forcefully tell yourself to stop thinking, you will think about it. So it is pointless to use force. Instead, let the thoughts flow like water. Just observe them. Later, you may try to direct them towards positive things. Repeating mantras like, I am a good person can also help. No matter how you do it, be sure to be consistent with it. Do it once in the morning and again before sleeping. You can start small with one minute meditations and scale them up as you feel comfortable. Don't dive into 10 minutes because you are still building discipline as a beginner. Find the best meditation that suits your style. If you do this every day for at least five minutes, you'll begin to notice the changes in your life. Thank you for listening. Comment below. What positive thoughts can you start to meditate on? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and we'll see you next time.